Yes, we can see. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me a chance to this nice meeting. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about uh, construction of one function using crystal symmetry. I'm Takashi Koretsune from Tohoku University, Japan. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is the outline of my talk. First, I'd like to explain how to construct one function using symmetry. And the second topic is about symmetry adaptive one functions. <clears throat> okay. Uh, as you know, uh, the key quantity to calculate one function is the overlap matrix, which is defined like this. <clears throat> and uh, this is a, a k vector. Uh, uh, K vector in the Fubrian zone, and the B is the vector that connect K point to its neighbors. So we have to calculate this quantity in the, all the K point and all the B vectors. So in the current implementation, uh, in the quantum express, uh, we first calculate all the wave function in the full K mesh and calculate uh, overlap matrix. And in some codes, for example, bus can bus calculate a uh, wave function in the irreducible Brian zone and then generate wave function in full K mesh using symmetry and calculate this quantity. <clears throat> but it takes uh, a lot of time and the uh, file size of this uh, matrix uh, can be very large. So uh, I'd like to explain uh, how to calculate this matrix using uh, symmetry. So to do, to do this, uh, we first uh, define the wave function in the full brilliant zone, which can be written by the symmetry operation and the wave function in the uh, in the reducible brilliant zone like this. Okay, but uh, the point is that there is a several symmetry operation that moves k k point in the reducible brilliant zone to this point. So yeah, this is Ki and this is Kf. So there are several uh, symmetry operations for this. And uh, we have to fix, uh, determine which uh, symmetry operation we use for each K point. And to calculate overlap matrix, we have to fix this G0 for each K point. <clears throat> okay, so now let's discuss uh, the uh, overlap matrix in the full brilliant zone. Uh, using the wave function in the irreducible Brillouin zone. Then uh, the, this matrix can be written like this and using the wave function in the irreducible Brillouin zone, then this become like this. And uh, this G0 and G0 prime is a symmetry operation. And uh, in general, this uh, symmetry operation, these symmetry operations are different. So, we cannot rewrite this uh, this uh, expression using uh, this uh, overlap matrix in the irreducible Brillouin zone. But uh, we can decompose this G zero prime using G zero and H. Uh, here, H is a little group, uh, a symmetry operation in a little group of K. So this is a set of symmetry operation that doesn't change uh, K point. And using this uh, equation, uh, uh, we can rewrite this like this. And using this relation, uh, this expression, and then we can rewrite this using the uh, overlap matrix in the irreducible Brillouin zone, and then under uh, this uh, matrix. Uh, this is called the uh, representation matrix. And uh, once we can obtain this quantity, then we can calculate overlap matrix in the full Brillouin zone. Okay. And next, let us consider the symmetry for projection matrix, which is defined like this. And uh, this is a uh, initial running orbital. And uh, again, we consider the uh, pro projection matrix in the full Brillouin zone. Uh, which can be written like this and this. And uh, so we can rewrite uh, this using the uh, 
the function in the electricity beyond zone. And this part, uh, in this part, uh, we know how, how this uh, uh, orbitals transforms under the symmetry operation, uh, which can be written like this. And this is a so-called rotation matrix. So using this uh, equation, then we can rewrite this using the uh, projection matrix in the electricity can zone and the rotation matrix. Okay, so that's what we did. So in the implementation, uh, we first calculate a wave function in the irreducible Brian zone using a quantum express. And then we use a modified uh, PW21 and 90 to calculate uh, these matrices in the irreducible Brian zone. And also we calculate a representation matrix and rotation matrix. And uh, combining this quantity and we we calculate these, these matrices in the full Brillian zone. Uh, for this, uh, we implemented a new code. And using this Python code, we can generate this quantity. And then we can run uh, 1 and using this. Uh, this is what I did uh, in this implementation. And uh, this code works with uh, any symmetry operation that uh, quantum experts can consider. So uh, this can this works with uh, unitary symmetry operation, anti-unitary symmetry operation, fractional translations, and we can also use a uh, spin orbit coupling and with a soft and PAW shoot potentials. And uh, this code is uh, implemented and uploaded here. So you can check uh, how it works uh, using this code. Okay, now let me show some example. Uh, this case, uh, uh, this is a band structure of cobalt shandite with spin of coupling. And this is calculated by uh, orig original one in 90 compared with the DFT calculations. And this is a new calculation. So as you can see, uh, both calculation agrees well with the uh, DFT is one, and uh, the total spread of uh, one functions are uh, very similar. Uh, this original one is this, and the uh, new calculation the spread is like this. And uh, in the in this calculation, we use uh, about 500 k points, but new calculation we only calculate is 60. Five k points uh, because there are twelve symmetries, and uh, so the computational time is about ten times faster. And the uh, MMN and the M file uh, is uh, the size is uh, one tenth of the uh, original one. Okay, uh, this is a fast topic, and uh, let's move on to the next one: uh, symmetry adaptive one function. Uh, with uh, frozen windows. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, as pointed out by several talks in this meeting, uh, symmetry of one year function obtained by one year 90 is slightly broken. And uh, this is inconvenient for analyzing topological properties. So there are two, two approaches. One is symmetrizing the Hamiltonian after one yearization. And the second approach is symmetry adaptive one. Okay, so for, uh, I, I will explain this method. <clears throat> okay, uh, first, uh, let me briefly summarize uh, the uh, previous approach. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is the definition of one year function, as you know, and uh, this is U matrix, and we have to determine this U matrix. <clears throat> and uh, this U matrix can be written like this. Uh, this is a block wave function, and this is a, a Fourier transform one function like this. <clears throat> and then we consider the symmetry relations for block wave function and one functions. Okay, so this is a relation for block wave function. And uh, uh, yeah, 
when we apply a symmetry operation for wave function, the wave function uh, changes like this. But uh, we know all the block wave function, so we can calculate this quantity. And uh, this is a relation for uh, Fourier transform of Wagner functions. And in this case, uh, if we assume the symmetry adapted to any function for this part, then we can calculate how this uh, wave function uh, transforms under the symmetry operation. Then we can calculate this D matrix. And uh, yeah, uh, in the current implementation, uh, the, we can calculate this matrix matrices uh, using symmetry adapted mode and the uh, calculated file, uh, the data is written in uh, DMN file. But uh, using the uh, method in the first topic, uh, we can also easy, easily calculate this quantity. Actually, this corresponds to the uh, representation matrix and this corresponds to the rotation matrix. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so these are three uh, equations uh, shown in the previous slide. And uh, combining these relations, equations, uh, we can easily obtain how this U matrix uh, transforms under the symmetry uh, operation. And uh, so this is the uh, yeah, symmetric constraint for this U matrix. So once we obtain a U matrix that satisfies this condition, then we can obtain the symmetry adapted one functions. And to symmetrize this matrix, how uh, we has we first uh, symmetrize UK in the redistributed zone using the little group of GK, and then expand UK to the whole Brillian zone like this. Okay, so this is a, a main idea of symmetry adapted one function approach. Now, uh, let me move on to the entangled case. <clears throat> In this case, a uh, one function can be written like this. And uh, this, uh, this is an uh, yeah, optimal subspace for each K point defined like this. And this is a projection operator, as you know. So, yeah, we have to determine this U matrix and this U opt. And the relation between one year function and the block wave function is uh, characterized by this U times U opt like this. Yeah, instead of U, we have to consider U dot. And the symmetric constraint uh, becomes like this. So there is only one constraint for the U matrix, U and U opt. Okay, and uh, in the previous study, uh, he assumed that uh, you opt also obeys this symmetry constraint. Uh, this means this corresponds to the assumption that this wave function uh, also behaves like a Fourier transform of one year function. So he added additional assumption, and this assumption is not compatible with. Uh, frozen window. So that's why we cannot use the frozen window in the previous approach. Okay. So uh, we considered another implementation. In this approach, uh, we first calculate U opt matrix uh, without any symmetry constraint. And then we impose the, the symmetry constraint when optimizing this U matrix. So we first we calculate U, mat, U opt and then U, and then we can calculate U dot, and then we symmetrize U dot, and then we calculate U U using this relation. And using, uh, yeah, repeating this process uh, until we get the convergence. Uh, that's what we did in this new implementation. And the advantage of this method is that we can use the frozen window technique. But the problem is that uh, uh, this U matrix uh, is, uh, 
this unitarity of this U matrix can be broken by symmetrization. Yeah, uh, it depends on the choice of frozen window and initial orbitals. And uh, yeah, anyway, so as a result, uh, the obtained Hamiltonian does not necessarily reproduce the original energy bands. So that's the problem in this approach. So let me explain uh, yeah, this uh, advantage and the problem in the example. Okay, uh, this is an example of uh, uh, the case of niobium. Uh, these are the comparison of TFT band structure and the one interpolated one. <clears throat> uh, this is the original one in 90s result with frozen window and no sy symmetry constraint. And uh, this one is uh, a original one in 90s symmetry adapted mode with no frozen window. And this is new calculation. So as you can see, this calculation fails to uh, reproduce the DFT results. But the uh, first one and the third one will reproduce the result, a DFT result, results. So yeah, in this energy scale, both works uh, very well. So uh, <clears throat> let me check the detail of the band structure. So we focus on this area. And uh, this is a magnified uh, plot of the band structure uh, on the gamma P line. And uh, this black one is a DFT zero result. And this one is a, a first uh, one, uh, one in 90 with frozen window and no symmetry. And the uh, green one is a uh, new calculation. So DFT and one in 90, with frozen window well agrees with each other. But uh, this new calculation uh, gives slightly different energy. But the difference is very small, about 0.1 millib. Next, uh, let me focus on this band, this one. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, this band is doubly degenerate due to symmetry. I mean, the Wave functions are characterized by two dimensional representation. So uh, we brought the energy difference of the W degenerate band uh, in this plot. And uh, yeah, DFT calculation, uh, this band is uh, completely degenerate. So the energy difference is uh, zero, like this. And the new calculation, we impose the symmetry. So the energy difference is also zero. But uh, when if, uh, original one in 90 with frozen window, there is no symmetry constraint. So this band is actually not uh, degenerate. There is a, uh, yeah, this energy is lifted slightly. Yeah, energy scale is very small, but there is a, a difference. So that's how what we did. So yeah, in this new approach, uh, band structure is slightly different, but uh, we can properly impose the yeah, yeah, sym symmetry is properly imposed. Okay, so that's what we did. Uh, so first, uh, we explain how to calculate one function using the symmetry. And second, uh, I, I explained another implementation of symmetry adapted uh, approach used with frozen window. And uh, this code is uploaded here. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's very convenient if uh, one in 90 uh, can read uh, this quantity and uh, yeah, regenerate uh, MMN and AMN inside the code. But uh, it, uh, to, it's a bit difficult to treat the symmetry using, a fam uh, using photon and so, uh, yeah, I don't know where to start. So I'm happy to discuss about this topic. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so thank you very much for the very nice talk, Takashi. So now we have time for questions. I see already one from Arash.
So Kathy, thank you very much for a really nice talk and, and really nice work. I think a lot of them have been talking about irreducible grid lines in this week. So I think you you've solved all the problems that have been discussed. Um, I don't know who the right person is you can talk to in terms of getting this into PWC officially. Uh, maybe you're already in touch. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, it's very, it's very difficult to hear. Yeah, because the microphone is just here, so, so if you can come closer to this. Yeah, there, there. So, uh, Takashi, I was just saying uh, on on the irreducible Berlin zone stuff. That's really nice work. Uh, thanks very much for doing that, and I, I think you're in touch with Marco for. Trying to get this into PW to Bernie 90 officially. So that's, that's great. Can you give us a sense of the, uh, uh, the, the, the computational cost saving that you get? Because the, the, there's, some, there's some additional work you have to do with the D matrices, right? To expand it out. But presumably that costs nothing almost. Mm, sorry. Yeah. Computational cost for what? Uh, for going from. Uh, the irreducible Brillouin zone to the full matrix. Presumably, that costs very little. Doing the the operation uh, to, to expand out. Uh, expanding is, uh, I think, it's uh, not so yeah heavy. Yeah, yeah. I use Python code, but uh, the calculation cost is uh, not so large. Uh, and, and these D matrices, are they the same D matrices in the uh, symmetry adapted code, or there's the, the new matrices that need to be calculated? Uh, yeah, uh, in the previous uh, implementation, uh, we calculate D matrix in a uh, full Brillouin zone. So it, in this case, this is only for irreducible Brillouin zone. Okay. And then on the second part, I had I had a question: Is can you can you explain to us why the frozen window is is not compatible with the symmetry constraint? Is there an easy way to understand that? Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, okay. Yeah. In the previous approach, uh, uh, he assumes that uh, this wave function behaves like. Uh, one uh, Fourier transform of one function. So this means this m correspond to the uh, index of one orbitals. But on the other hand, in the frozen window approach, uh, the u opto is determined like this. So within the frozen window, the uh, the u opto is uh, just a, a diagonal uh, matrix, and uh, this Band index is uh, this index is just the uh, same as uh, this band index. So yeah, this uh, index is completely different in the in the frozen window approach and this uh, symmetry adapted approach. So that's why we cannot use a uh, frozen window approach in this yeah in the symmetry adapted one. Okay, other questions? I have one actually, probably it's me and I, I, I must have missed this, but can you go back to this um, slide where you show there is a difference in the interpolated bands if you calculate them with a standard method and with a symmetrized, uh, like there is a two millilitre volt uh, difference? Mm. Sorry. Uh... It's difficult to hear. I'm sorry. Could you repeat again? I was asking if you can go back to the slide where you show that there is a small mismatch. Yeah, this one. Okay. Oh yeah. So what I want. So this sim vanier, you're you're not. This these are not the symmetry adapter any function. This is just the symmetry symmetrization you do at the very beginning of these overlap matrices and right. Uh no. In this case, uh, this red one is symmetry adapted one. The, the red line a red one red one is not uh, red one is original one so okay. there is no symmetry and the green one 
is symmetry adapted. Is yeah, right. Okay. So so the difference comes from the symmetry adapted, not from the the, the you know the the, the first uh, method you showed. Mm. Sorry. So this is symmetry adapted Vanier functions, right? Yeah. Sy symmetry adapted. So the, the, the discrepancy comes from the the fact that you are, you know, it's a different kind of Vanier functions if you want, right? It it's doesn't come from the symmetrization of the, you know, this uh, unfolding of the, uh, and so the, from the irreducible brain zone to the full brain zone of the overlap matrices and the, uh, and the AM and the projection matrices. Yeah, it is nothing to do with unfolding. It is nothing oh, okay. to do with unfolding, but uh, it is because of the symmetrization in the irreducible bridge and so on. So it's due to the symmetrization. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it, it is similar to the symmetrization after we get tight binding Hamiltonian, right? But that should be, you know, identical. It's just, uh, you're just, you know, you, you are, it, it's, uh, let's say it's more convenient to do, uh, you know, to, to use the symmetries, but the, the values should be really, really identical, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, even for tight binding, symmetrizing the tight binding Hamiltonian, they are, they are, they are hoping uh, slightly changes and the boundary slightly changes. Okay. So, So here in the second approach, you opt slightly breaks the symmetry, right? Because we do not impose any symmetry constraint in the U opt in the in the second approach. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll, you know, we'll, we can discuss this this later. Um, other questions? Yes, can you come here? Discuss the questions here. Yeah, yeah, it's this. Uh, hi, so is there a limit on um, which initial projections you can use with this symmetry? Do like initial projections have to observe the symmetry or can they, you know, break the symmetry and then you kind of symmetrize them later? Mm, yeah, yeah, initial projection is uh, very important in both calculations. Yeah, in the first case, uh, if the yeah one function breaks is uh, yeah is not compatible with symmetry, then we cannot do. And uh, of course, in the second approach, uh, yeah, if you use uh, uh, yeah not good uh, in short, then we cannot get a good uh, yeah one uh, function. Uh, so, for example, for like transition metals, we often put like s orbital in the interstitial site away from the atom. So that means that all of those uh, yeah. would, would not work, or yeah. Uh, in the case of uh, yeah, couple uh, iron, uh, yeah, we can put uh, s orbital in the interstitial site, and uh, we can get uh, very good uh, one-year functions. Oh, okay, it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Questions? Other questions? No. Okay, so if not, we can thank Akashi again. Yeah, thank you very much.